Well, guys, Alex Faratov here, and today we have an amazing guest. Um, this guy, like, I mean, he, we used to be neighbors, like, in the same building, <laughs> literally. Um, I, just, I just moved to the United States, and um, I met this guy. Since then, you moved, right? You moved to Denver, right? Moved to Denver, Stockholm, now I'm in Tallinn, Estonia, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Um, so this guy has uh, achieved amazing things with VSL, uh, building the brand, exiting uh, the brand, uh, in skincare space, what you've done in like in in that period of time, like is is very like it, it's mind blowing. Crazy shit you can do with you know some sweet media buying and some sweet VSLs. There ain't nothing a VSL can't solve. Tell me about VSLs, right? And and before this, this before we started, you just told me like you can sell anything with VSL. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'll tell you a quick little story, right? Because um, I got started with advertorials. I mean, six years ago, I met some mentors who taught me how to run advertorial supplements on Facebook. And uh, these guys were insane. I had struggled for four years before this. And then I met some mentors. My life exploded doing supplements on Facebook. And then um, eventually we pivoted to e-com because supplements were getting really a challenge. So we pivoted to e-commerce. And um, a lot of the advertorials were kind of done for me when I did supplements. But when I moved to e-com, like foot insoles, for example, I was like, there are no advertorials to sell foot insoles. So after a while, eventually we realized, man, I really got to increase my sales copy to like sell these foot insoles using advertorials. So um, we ended up practicing a lot, a lot, a lot to end up learning how to write advertorials to sell e-commerce products. And um, I remember we had, you know, some big explosions and then we ended up getting some accounts banned. And I saw this video this like slideshow video of just like, it looked like Buzzfeed. It was like just a slideshow, a picture. There's no talking. And I'm like, dude, this is like, I could just literally upload my advertorial and just run this on Facebook. So people don't have to click and like read. Oh, really? Like, like, so, so, the, the, so the VSL is literally running as an ad? It's an advertorial in a video format. It's something you watch instead of have to read. That's crazy. And that's so, what you that's this is four years ago, right? So we turned this thing into a VSL. We didn't, it was a VSL. And um, what we found out really quick was our CPMs dropped because everything the, the customer is staying on Facebook. And then we found out that people would watch for longer because they didn't have to click off of it. Right. Wow. So we just found that these VSLs just worked way better than the advertorials that we had. Um, and then there was one day, I'll tell you a quick story. There was one day we were cr we were cranking this thing. Um, it was really exploding. I, we had spent $70,000 in a day. No, we'd spent $72,000 and we got $70,000 back as an affiliate. This wasn't dropshipping. We we're affiliates for a foot and sole. And so we just lost $2,000 that day. It was like a Saturday. We just lost two grand, but there's money flying everywhere. There's just money flying all over the place. And this was the first VSL that we really started to like crack. And I'm like, oh my God, if I could just 10% bump on this video, <laughs> question it, right? We're making $10,000, $15,000 a day, no sweat, just a little tiny bump. So I'm like, man, what do I do? And I was completely out of ideas, right? So I remember this guy named John Benson from when I was coming up, he was the inventor of the VSL. And I was like, who, who do I know that knows VSLs? Oh, John Benson. So I go on his Facebook page. What do I know? He has literally a post that says, hey, I have two more spots left for my private coaching. Hit me up if you want to do it. I'm like... God damn it. So I hit up John Benson. I'm like, dude, I need help. I got this thing. It's banging. He's like, sure. It's five grand for four phone calls. I'm like, done. I get on the call. He reads my sales copy for my VSL. He shits all over it. He doesn't write anything. He just yells at it while I'm talking to him. And then I go up and I fix it. And then the next thing it explodes. Absolutely explodes. We go on to just ROI, just cranks it. We're making insane amount of money. And the best day that we ended up having a day that was like $160,000 in ad spend on Facebook and 200 grand in revenue as an affiliate. So it was straight, straight a $40,000 profit day in the pocket. And that ever since that happened, I've been doing VSLs ever since that four years later, every single day, nonstop. It's the only thing I do with my life is literally make VSLs every day, but now at a much higher level. Yeah. Because there's, you just, the biggest ads in the world are VSLs. If their their biggest ads in the world are VSLs, Gundry, one of the top guys, V Shred, V Shred was the biggest advertiser direct response starting of January first of this year. You could look at AdBeat to prove that. And uh, 
Yeah, guys who have million dollar days are running VSLs. Everyone was selling just like with simple landers, like, I mean, they would put some advertorials together and you instead did the VSL. Correct, yeah. You just, and we used a tool called um, Lumen5, L-U-M-E-N-5. It's basically a BuzzFeed video generator. 200 grand a day on a slideshow video, right? Just <laughs> slideshow, words sliding across, eight minutes long, pictures, ugly pictures. I was like, for four, like for literally three years, all I did was slideshows. Just wow. for three years. Crazy stuff. Who would do the sound? Like, would you do or would you hire like someone in Fiverr to kind there of- There was like no that? sound. No voiceover. It was just That's reading. Anyone can turn an advertorial into a slideshow VSL and probably have it do better than what they currently have with just maybe a couple hours of the work on lumen5.com. Just throw that shit in there. Okay, so then you run it as, as is on Facebook or do you have it as VSL? People land and people cannot scroll and people got to watch. The, the highest ROI you could ever have has to be on Facebook because when somebody clicks off, you're losing 10%, 15%, 18% of people. Just to have someone click play on a landing page, I think that's at least 10% drop off rate on click, just to click play on a video because you can't autoplay. So everything you run it direct on Facebook. So they scroll and they're into VSL right away. And then you click the checkout. You send a checkout. We would run directly to a checkout page, not a, not a Shopify order page, a just checkout page. You want three, one, three or six, but here's your credit card. <laughs> just literally order page. Cause think about it. Like they shouldn't be leaving Facebook until they're sold. They don't, they shouldn't do anything until they are time to buy. That's the only time they should leave Facebook is when it's time to buy. So here's the checkout. <laughs> Everything else has been covered in the VSL. Man, what's it, what's the average, like, okay. So what's typical, like land of that VSL kind of like from your, from your experience, what's the sweet spot there. And also what would you achieve as, um, as a marketer in terms of like average watch time in Facebook? Yeah. All right. So a good average watch time, if a video is longer than 10 minutes, I would say is 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. A great average watch time is like 60 seconds. That tells me a lot about how to diagnose VSLs. So I started out with eight minutes. I started out at six to eight minutes and then some, some got up there to 11 minutes. And then when, uh, and then we got around 12 minutes when we were a little bit professional and then when I learned about closes and how to do closes correctly, then my VSLs got around 20 minutes. And then now, after I've learned about tips and I've learned about telling the full stories, literally my VSLs are 45 to an hour long. 45 to an, an hour long. <laughs> so you run, that, you run that on Facebook, like 45 minutes? Peep, imagine this. You're scrolling <laughs> you see ad, and it's an hour long. And you watch the whole thing and you buy. The, hard, the hardest part of my job is literally convincing my coworkers that we should run hour-long videos. And they're going to be more profitable than anything that you guys could ever create. And no one fucking believes me. That's the hardest now, thing about my job. It's trying to believe that, If that's like, I mean, I mean, like, so in your circles, I mean, you know, like these other guys, like top shots, like doing like massive volumes, like, is everyone doing this? Yes. The biggest guys are doing this. If they're not doing lead gen, they're doing this. Yeah, for sure. In the world that I play in. So like right now, I don't play in the drop shipping world. I play in yeah. the brand building world because these VSLs are so professional. It takes 10 grand for me to make one, 15 grand for us to make one now. So if we're going to make one, I'm not going to do it for a crappy product with you know yeah. 14 day shipping time. It's amazing product, three to five day shipping. Because why? That's just just, just going to be a pain in the ass for the other way. Why? Why it costs like ten Gs? Is that because you you hiring copywriter or you do it, you you write the copy? You kind of like that's the most highest leverage activity. You do it by yourself. Like why it costs like 10, 15 Gs? So right now I do the copy. Right. So we just did a shoot in a studio that cost ten grand. Just the studio, uh -huh. beautiful setup in the background. Right. You know, if you're paying your doctor, for example, we paid our dermatologist a thousand dollars for every hour. She let us shoot for us. So if we did one shot down there, that would that cranks it up a little bit as like a prepay. And then editing, editing might take $1,500 to $2,000, depending how long it takes, depending how long it is. 
Um, amount of B-roll that might, that might take, you know, a thousand dollars to get stuff from Shutterstock or to pay actresses to do B-roll for your product. So just like little things. And I'm sure I'm missing something. Like I had a copywriter that was working, that I was, that was, that I had trained, but that's like super high level, right? Super at the highest level. So if, if you're like on a budget, right? Like, can you do it? Like, like, so, I mean, let's say you put your own work in, like you, you're putting the VSL together, like, how much will it cost you? Like five hundred thousand dollars. If you're doing um, Lumen Five Zero, it costs you zero dollars. It costs you whatever hundred dollars for Lumen Five is what it costs you. Yeah, because you can literally just screenshot. If you're doing drop shipping, I'm sure half your guys don't have a problem with, you know, leveraging content off YouTube. Put it that way, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm sure that's no one does that over there, right? You can't do it with the brands, but in that world, yeah, you just, you can get your footage however you want to get your footage and you just drop it in each little scene and uh, you take photos. I know just selfie ugly video works just on a regular iPhone camera works crazy right now. Just user generated style. Mm-hmm. Doesn't need much. You just need a good story, bro. It's not really about how it's filmed. Um, it's about the story that's being told, about the problem that's being solved. It's about the angle, how you're grabbing attention, the big mm-hmm. idea, solid what copy you, stuff. What do you say what people say, like, it's kind of like uh, the hook, like first five seconds, like 10 seconds, like three seconds, whatever. That is the most like, crucial part of the video or not, or not, or not in your experience? No. So it's, you think about it, like, uh, it's, it's, it's a funnel. The VSL is a funnel. So High click-through rate, you know, on a landing page, VSL, the click-through rate is your cost per three-second view, right? Your, your, click, your click-through rate is retention, three-second retention rate, right? I think like um, having a 70% three-second retention rate is amazing. That's what you always strive for is 70% of people who click play made it past three seconds. Then you have that dial. So at the beginning, it doesn't matter what your VSL is. It all that matters is you got as many people watching it as possible. And then once you have your intro down and cost per three second view is like 10 cents or below eight cents, then you focus on the back end and then you optimize the back end of the VSL to get that to work. Hey guys, uh, people have been asking me how we scale to multiple six figures or even seven figures per month without getting shut down on Facebook. And we have a very sophisticated solution for this that I want to share with you, but it's, it's just like too valuable to give away for free. So if you guys want this solution, just book a call with one of my team members and we'll show you exactly what it is and how it works and we'll see if that's a good fit uh, for you and for your business. So just book a call with my team member, we'll share it with you so you can scale your business to multiple six figures or even seven figures per month without getting shut down on Facebook, without having inconsistency and with high profitability. So just book a call with my team and I'll see you there. You guys like still like, do you focus on like US market or like you, you kind of go international broad, like doesn't matter? Um, I focus on the U.S. market. Every time we scale international, international is such a bitch because you'll 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 be you in U.S. and then you'll go, oh, we can go international English. So you'll do worldwide English speaking, whatever, right? And then oh my god, it's working so well. And then you scale it up, and then once you get to like 10k a day, just each, and you're like, wow, this offer doesn't scale. And you're like, no, you're just scaling international English. You got to scale U.S. U.S. is the place to be. You shouldn't touch international till you're doing at least $100,000 a day, every day um, between Facebook and YouTube. If you're not doing at least $50,000 a day, you, you, your problem is not international. Don't care about international. If, now, if you're looking for, if you're a young guy with not a lot of cash and you're looking to get ROI, yeah, international is probably the way to go. Good idea. So Facebook and YouTube, right? Like what percentage kind of like where, where, do, where do you like spend most of your budgets? Uh, YouTube is the king of the internet these days, right? So YouTube is bigger than Facebook. They took over since COVID started. 40% Facebook, 60% YouTube. Whatever you can do on Facebook, you can do more on YouTube and it will last longer and be more consistent and less stability and less compliance rules on YouTube. Is that the same format, like what you just outlined? Kind of like that's the same format, the VSL, like long 10 minute VSL or on YouTube it's different? It's, it's the introduction is different, right? So what we do is, and the way to do it, I think is test on Facebook because Facebook, you can move at a rocket ship speed because it's, it's epic. And then whatever you get 
you want to move over to YouTube, but you pay the diff you pay differently between Facebook and YouTube. So the strategies are a little bit different because um, Facebook is all about sucking as many people into your video as possible, right? Using scroll stoppers to grab attention, hooks for the first three seconds of the video to snap somebody into paying attention. YouTube is about qualifying in the first five seconds, right? So you want people to click off who are you definitely are not going to be interested. And then you suck everybody in after five seconds. So you'll see a lot of the top YouTube videos on Vitao. They'll be like, if you have vision problems, you must see this, right? So just a qualifying, if you have vision, if vision is a fucking problem for you, check this out. So you want people who are not like good fit just to clip like, uh, you know, skip yeah, this out. Really fast. Yeah. You want people to skip quickly if they're not interested. Uh -huh. And that is how a lot of the big YouTube campaigns work. There's also, I mean, YouTube is now penalizing videos longer than whatever, I don't know, maybe five minutes long. I forget what the actual number is. Um, so a lot of the top guys are going from three minute lead to a VSL on a landing page. Uh, but still, Agora, Gundry, they're still running 20 to hour minute long VSLs direct on YouTube and that's working really well. For like for e-commerce products, do you need to have like, um, that's what I've heard from some people, you, you need to have like a specific price point for make it like worthwhile, your margin, for example, you need to be able to spend like $60, $70 for acquisition, you know, whatever. Pricing point needs to be like $100 or AOV needs to be $100, you know, whatever. Have you, have you seen that from, from your perspective? I mean, the biggest campaigns I've ever ran have all been around $39, $49. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that's front end or that's like AOV? Front end for one bottle, right? Uh -huh. So our bottle was $49, but we were able to get $140 AOV, sure. right? Um, because we know how to do the closes. We know how to inspire people to buy six bottles instead of one bottle. And then the upsell, right? The big, the upsells were so, the biggest thing I learned about upsells, about increasing AOV is that all the, the biggest difference happens before the people bought, before people bought. That's, that's how you get the upsells to work. Not after they buy, and then you just tweak your upsell page. It's before they buy and getting them in the mindset of, hey, you are going to get a load. <laughs> one of the rules of AOV is never show one bottle right? Always show six bottles, never show one product. Cause you don't want them to buy one product. You're just planting six bottles there. You're going to buy six. Like there's just, there's, there's a lot of little tweaks in the VSL that get people to start thinking about six bottles and stocking up in case you run out, you know, stuff like that. You like compliance, you're right? Like Facebook, YouTube, you're dealing like with any of the compliance issues. Yeah. So you have to become a master of compliance. If you're an e-com brand, digital product owners, which is what I'm doing now, basically zero rules. The rules are thrown out the door. I can say the word you, I have an ad that has a before and after picture in it on Facebook. You can do so much stuff if you're a, a, a digital brand, but yeah, with an e-commerce- by, by digital brand, you mean like information product? Yeah, a video subscription. So right now I'm doing VSLs for Mindvalley. I work with Mindvalley. Sold the company, traveled around for six months, doing nothing ran into Vision on a boat in Croatia, and then now we work together. Now we're business partners. Man, this is, this is amazing. So I think one of, the, one of the interesting kind of like, you look into your, uh, you know, looking through your journey, like you always kind of like found way to connect with the right people. How, how do you approach that? Yeah, partners are the number one reasons why companies fail, Partner blow partnership blowups. So number, reason, number one reason why they fail. 90% of businesses fail, majority is because of partnership blowups. Um, but in my history of 10 year, I'm basically started my first company 10 years ago. Every, my biggest wins came right after partnerships and my biggest losses came right after I went on my own and thought I could do it all on my own because I'm a pro now. I know what I'm doing. I can just go do it on my own. That never worked like that. It was always a partnership blew it up. So partnerships are the way to go. And I basically believe there's a, there's a personality test you can take called wealth dynamics. The best, it's the only personality test that's ever actually helped me. <laughs> oh, it's, called? it's called wealth dynamics and it, it's a personality test to determine how you're supposed to make money. Because there's different types of billionaires, right? There's Oprah Winfrey, who's a star and she's on stage. There's Warren Buffett, who's a trader. There's Donald Trump, who's a deal maker, right? There's Steve Jobs, who's a creator. 
Richard Branson's a creator. So there's different personality types for how you're supposed to naturally make money. And um, if you have to align yourself with that way, like I'm a creator, but I suck balls at a lot of other types of the business, right? So a partnership, I'm almost a half, I call myself a half a circle. It's just because I'm a perfect half circle. But if I go on my own, I just smack my face, I roll and then I smack myself and then I roll and then I smack myself. But when I have a partner, I'm a full, we're a full force and we roll together at rock speed, rock solid speed. But I, I'm, I'm a master of my little craft on my one little corner, which is VSLs, consumer acquisition, media buying. You cannot do it all. Personally, I'm nothing against drop shippers. I just refuse. I think the drop shipping model is a good idea because you just got so much work that you have to do. Either an affiliate marketer is the same thing as drop shipping, except you don't have to worry about inventory, big accounting. You don't have to worry about building websites. You just sell someone else's stuff and you still have to do the Facebook ads. Then there's drop shipping, which is basically you're doing everything, right? But the problem is it's all kind of shit because the shipping times are slow and the products are, you know, rarely world class. And then there's brand building, which is basically everything you have to do with drop shipping, except nicer products, you use a 3PL, faster shipping, right? So to me, it was like, I'm better off focusing on it as being an affiliate and cracking that. So that was my story. I just, I did a little bit of drop shipping and I was like, it just, I can't juggle. You can't juggle all those things, especially with yeah. drop shipping. There's so much, well, just drop shipping is e-com, is, is, is e-commerce, except uh, it's just not brand building. If you're, if it takes longer than five days, it's not brand building. That's what I think. So if people want to like, kind of like learn more and like master like VSL, like, would you recommend like just go and like find the best people? Like you said, John Benson, finding you, paying you, like paying you on someone else, or trying to, to kind of like get their hands dirty, creating like 10, 20, 50, 100 variations, and then from there, like kind of like get help. I thought it was copywriting, right? I thought I had to read all the copywriting books. So 10, eight years ago, I read so many, all the copywriting books, basically all of them. Everything went to sh- didn't make anything. You know, I'm sitting there with a blank page. Like, how the f- do I put this together? I can't figure it out. Throw it out the window. Give up. Not going to do it anymore. Um, eventually get into advertorials. What I learned with advertorials, how we cracked writing advertorials was um, I just realized I couldn't write it. But what we realized was I had this other advertorial that was making so much money. Why don't I just rewrite this advertorial? Why don't I just like, it says, oh, this is about boosting your brain power. Okay. I'm going to change that to re- relieving back pain. So you just, it, like this advertorial became a sales pitch that's almost like ad lib. So I was able to like just change out certain words and just have an advertorial that's very similar just by taking something that's working and just changing it, rewriting it for a new product. That mm. started to become a thing. I started doing that over and over again. And I actually get to get some traction on it because it wasn't too hard. I just, the formula is already there. You know, it's a proven sales pitch. You know, this advertorial does well. So once I started doing that, that really started helping me. And then I stopped reading copywriting books. All I started doing was going on spy tools. Spy tools ended up being my thing. If I see a VSL now that's crushing, I, wa- I, I go on it. I, go to, I send it to rev.com, which is the transcribing tool. And I break it down into chunks. I get the sales formula. What I realized is that with VSLs, it's all about the formula. It's a hero's journey. Look up the hero's journey. Look up the storyline. It goes, this happened, this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens. Um, and it follows a lot of these advertorials follow a pattern. They follow a formula. And if you break it into chunks and write, what is this paragraph about? What is that paragraph about? In one in one in like five five words, what is this paragraph about? Like if it's a scene of a movie, look at VSLs like movies, like they're what's this scene about? Oh, it's a nightmare. Oh, they start out with an explosion. This person dies. Go on clickbank and break down this one. What's it? Oh, it's this drastic. They're hitting them with the emotional fucking things here. The big wow. idea, you need to have like the basic copywriting stuff. So you know what the pieces of the puzzle look like. And then you just see how they're organized. And then you just start rewriting them, rewriting them for a different product, changing, going out to a different story. If you see it's a nightmare story, you got to find another nightmare story that kind of works. But what I do now is study the study spy tools, study ad spy, study VidTal study ad beat, find videos, reverse engineering, dog. I'll tell you what, I do the same thing 
that I do that I did in high school when I had to pass the math test, right? <laughs> I would walk in the door and I would find the Asian kid to sit down next to. <laughs> or an Asian guy to sit down next to. And that's how I would f-ing pass it because I didn't want to get yelled at by my mom and I didn't study. Okay. That's what happened. Same thing, dog. You find the guys crushing it via cells and you revert and you rewrite it, right? You don't copy it because the teacher would catch me if I copied the answers. You got to change a couple things so you look like you did it on your own. But that's how you do it, dog. That's how you start out on a foundation. And if you rewrite, if you keep rewriting them, you're going to get something that works. And let me tell you, the biggest, most important thing, if the VSL is not working, it's because you haven't made enough versions of it. It takes, it's never your first version that wins. It is the 40th version. You are going for 40 versions. That's how much it takes. You keep wow. trying and trying and trying and trying and trying because at the beginning, you're just optimizing the first 10 seconds until you get a really good lead. And then you're like, okay, then you're optimizing the back end. So you keep trying and trying and trying. The biggest problem is that you only made six versions. Why isn't my VSL working? Well, you only made six of them. Try to get to 40. Are you in a big niche? Are you selling products that are proven to sell? Then it's not the product. Are you in a a niche with a problem that's proven people want to buy, like back pain or skincare or diet. Yeah, then it's not it's not the problem. People want to buy. People want a solution to this problem. Is something wrong with your copy? Something wrong? Your VSL sucks. It's not the CPMs. I fucking don't, don't. We're getting started now, dude. We're getting started. The price of your CPM is not too high. The conversion of your VSL is too low. The ad is an amazing ad, or it sucks. Take responsibility for the ad. Don't blame it on the CPMs. There we go. There's my there's my dance. But how, how do you find like what's wrong with it, right? Like how do you identify kind of like the bottleneck in yeah. the VSL? So I'll go through right a quick diagnosis checklist. So the beginning is always the introduction. You're getting the intro fixed. If you have a good cost per three second view, a lot of people are coming in, and your watch time is pretty good, like over thirty seconds or whatever then where's the problem? What do you do? Because that's a big thing. A big problem with VSLs is you know what to do next, right? (laughs) So assuming that you have a product, here's an example, right? We were an affiliate and um, we had a back pain offer and the story was great. We had, we were trying to relieve back pain. We know that's a big niche. Everybody loves that niche. We're trying to relieve the back pain. Uh, The introduction was great. We were getting so many people into it, but when it came time to whatever, buy the product, people were just weren't buying. All the stats were really good. It was for a back pain offer and people just weren't buying. I think we were selling um, like one of the acupuncture mats or whatever. It was like the acupuncture mat that you yeah. throw you around, right? With the spikes on it. And then somebody just wrote in the comments, I don't think this will work. And then one of our buddies, and we tried everything. And one of our buddies were like, man, I really think it might be the big idea, right? Because there's this big idea behind how, behind every product works that is so important about copywriting, which is well, how is it going to relieve my back pain, right? There's, there's, that, there's that one thing that tips you upside down. I forget what it's called, but they're like, you could relieve your, you could like stretch out your back to relieve your back pain. So we're like, I really don't think this laying on mats is going to convince someone that it's going to relieve their back. So we found another product that was selling, it was like a pain relief patch. So it was a pain relief patch. So it was still solving the same thing, solve your pain, but this was in a new way. It was the same story. And then it was, oh, you can, the big idea is different though. It's by blocking the signals to your brain, you can relieve your pain, right? So we tested that out and just tested the big idea, which the product is not the product. It's the product is just the mechanism. The big idea is like how it's going to work. You know, it's like, it's like you want to make sure your Uber driver looks like he's actually going to get you to where you want to go before you get in the car. You know what I mean? So that's what they're spying on. They're like, wow, this, I, that looks like I could actually get there. It's the light in the tunnel. That makes sense. I think that if I relieved my nerves here, I could relieve my back pain, right? The acupuncture mat, you're telling me if I lay on this, it's going to relieve it. I don't really believe it, right? Uh-huh. So that converted better. And then we found a foot and sole. And this foot and sole had little, little pokes at the bottom of it, little bumps at the bottom. And its sales pitch was like, hey, if you do acupuncture at the bottom of your feet in the right way, it'll relieve your, your back pain or your, it'll, it'll relieve some tension in your back. America loved it, right? America loved it. It was just switching out the big idea 
So what I realized after this, if the copy is good and the, and the, the beginning of the VSL is great and it's still not working and you know it's in a niche that everybody buys, and you know it's in a problem that's actually really painful, bro, big idea is the problem. People don't believe. It doesn't make sense. It's not a light in the tunnel. The big idea has to click. You talk to them about some toxic proteins that's causing them to age or you talk about some whatever. So they're, they're, you know, they're the cells in their skin are getting older as it bubbles up to the surface. It's, it's bubbling up too slowly. Your stem cells are the problem. So there's, those are the big ideas of niches. And all of the biggest campaigns on the planet all have one thing in common, and it's a new big idea. It's a new, unique mechanism. And copy is what it's called, the unique mechanism, how it's going to work. That's what they want to try. They want to try something new. And it's the unique mechanism. It's got to make sense in their brain that it's going to work. That's it has to make sense. So that's what I test a lot of times is the big idea. And then I switch the product out too. competition in saturation is the biggest myth in probably the whole world is that, oh my God, it's so saturated. Oh my God. It looks like, oh my God, there's so many people. It's a bad thing. People think that because there's so much competition, it's a bad thing. When in reality, the complete opposite is true complete opposite is true. When there's a ton of competition, that is amazing, right? There, the more nine-figure brands there are, the more likely you are to become a nine-figure brand, right? The more thriving businesses there are, the more likely you are to become a thriving business. I thought that I had this great idea to sell, it was called Cat Tree Construction Plans. This was nine years ago. It was a PDF <laughs> that taught you how to make cat trees for your cat. And I was like, there's nobody in this niche. It's such a good idea. Nobody thought of this amazing idea, right? In reality, if there's no competition, that is the biggest red flag. I see dead bodies when I don't see thriving competitors. I see dead bodies. That's because there's dead bodies you can't see. There's ghosts in the house, right? You do not want to be somewhere where there's no competition. There's no such thing as competition. We, we grew our skincare brand from zero to 40 million in sales in 12 months. And there is a million yeah. fucking skincare brands, a million. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It is a, people always want to try new things. How is it like, so, so you sold the business, um, like you had six months of like basically traveling and like exploring the world. That was cool. Doc. I mean, I've been living out of my suitcase for six months now, you know? So so when I, when I, when I met you, we had just started the company, the skincare brand. I can't say it because my partners still work there. I don't want to, I promised them I wouldn't blow them up. Then I moved to Denver so I could focus on maximizing this thing. You know, I never really wanted to be in Florida. I just got ended up on Florida on accident because of a hurricane. And then, uh, that, that, uh, so I was, I'm a Cal, I was, I grew up in California. So I'm trying to get back to California. They also limit like your social and social media, social interactions or people can, can get in touch with you. You can find me on Instagram, you know? I'm slow to respond sometimes, you know, if I don't, if, if you're private and we don't have a lot of mutuals, it might not respond, but I'll still, I see most things. So just send it to me, but don't expect that I can just respond to everybody. Uh, but yeah, zippy one one is my Instagram handle. You can find me there. Facebook, you can find me there. Click follow. One Oh one zippy one Oh one. Yeah. I came across this idea called the law of doubling. A lot of my friends in media buying didn't agree with this rule. How do you set goals as a media buyer? How do you set goals as an e-commerce brand? How do you actually set goals? And what I discovered if you're media buying is that doubling your high score is the best goal you can have. Um, it, it trumps stability. It trumps trying to do everything consistently. It's doubling your high score. So what that means is if the most amount of money you've made in a day is $100 a day, mm -hmm. then your goal should be $200 a day. Yeah. Anything higher than 200 is too high. Anything lower than 200 is too low. If you've made $1,000 a day as your high score, 2,000 should be your goal. Anything lower is too low. Anything higher. If $100,000 in a day is your high score, $200,000 a day should be what you focus on getting to. Anything lower is too low. Anything higher is too high. And that has been my North Star since things started working six years ago. And I have gone through 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600. I've gone all the way up to a quarter million a day. And my mission is to get to a half a million a day and then a million a day, right? That's my like, because to me, advertising on the internet, like a million dollars in a day is like the four minute mile of the industry. If you can get there, then 
that's like the, the best, the best are able to do that. Hmm. And the, I had a lot of friends who just cared about, I just want to make a hundred dollars a day. I just want to make a thousand dollars a day consistently. And they did that for a little bit, but it would always go to sh- and they would always lose motivation. And I always felt like they lost motivation because their goal was just weak and it wasn't very exciting. So the, what, the big difference with me is that my North star has always been double your high score and no, just keep going, just keep doubling it. It took, it could take two years. It could take three, sometimes it's taken me two years, three years, two and a half years just to double. That's what I like doing. I just love doubling the high score, following that little yellow brick road. One more question and that's it, man. I'll let you go. I mean, you- One more and then I'm going to share a little story and then we'll call it a thing. With finding, like, as you said, finding the doctor, right? Like, let's say like, do you think that's such a crucial kind of like element? Like- I'll tell you the four levels of a spokesperson, right? The four mm-hmm. levels of a spokesperson. The worst is somebody with no credibility and is a bad spokesperson, right? That's the that's the worst you can have, right? The th- level three is credit. So first off, credibility is part of influence 101, Robert Cialdini. Credibility, influence, yeah. the more in- ex- people want to, you have to be worth listening to. And if you're not, you have to find someone worth listening to, to be your spokesperson, right? The third level is somebody who's credible, but is a bad spokesperson, right? Let's say he's a great doctor, but he's a bad spokesperson. Now that's fairly weak unless he's like fucking Elon Musk level at this space, right? Elon Musk could stumble over his words all day long. No one gives a shit, right? Cause he's so credible, right? But still, if it's a regular credible person who's 20 years experience or whatever, they have to be good as a spokesperson at least. So the second level is a spokesperson, a great spokesperson who's not very credible. That's the second best thing that you can have because they can still crush it. You can, they can just be like, I'm the beauty expert. They don't have to be a dermatologist. They can just be, they can label themselves as a beauty researcher. Anyone can label themselves as a researcher <laughs> in five seconds. And then obviously the best one is authority figure who's a great spokesperson. And that's kind of it. Yeah. And it matters. It makes a difference, right? But you don't want to start there. You want to start with a VSL. And then if it works really well and it's scaling, then you make it a professional VSL and send, find a doctor, send them the camera through. Uh, so do you pay like these people, like you pay, let's say, like you said, thousand dollars per hour or like, I mean, you, you know, you're getting them like equity deal and like making them face of the brand, like, and kind of like make it more like, you know, like Azra Firestone did with, uh, with this lady. I don't know the exact arrangement. Yeah. She died. That's a funny one. <laughs> he got equity deal with this lady and then she died. Yeah. So we did a percentage of revenue. We gave our doctor, well, bef- we gave our doctor 1% of revenue up to 10% of profit. So she can never like, and we can't lose in that deal. She, if, if it's not profitable, then she doesn't get much, but 1% of revenue. So she likes that, that scales. She can make $30,000 a month doing nothing, right? Just cause she did one video shoot one time. Um, now, before we did this, before we did our first shoot, we paid her to compensate her a thousand dollars an hour for the first VSL that we did, that we shot in her office. And uh, that was it. Yeah, there you go. So, so like, so which deals do you personally prefer? Kind of like you pay a thousand bucks, that's it, you know, like all, uh, all like IP and everything kind of like doesn't belong to you. Like we paid you or these kind of like long-term commitments because that keeps other person accountable. I haven't even, I mean, first off, you want a partner, you want her and you want her on board to do multiple shoots. You want her to launch multiple products and her be the spokesperson. So you're going to want to give her a percentage of revenue. All actresses, you know, you give them a hundred bucks for their day. And the bucks to come in and shoot some B-roll. That's really it. Cool. All right, Moment. You said you have a story. Yeah. Okay. We'll end it off with this little story. This is my this is one of my favorite stories. So I love journaling, right? I lit- I got my iPad right here. One of my favorite habits in the evening is just to just vent, put everything down, chill with my journal and write. And I've been doing this for like six years. And I've been putting in 200 entries per year every year for six years. So I have like Wow. 1500 plus logs of just the day, how I was feeling, what was going through my mind, all this stuff. And a long time ago, one of my mentors told me, Hey, Pete, if you want to make more money, just track how much money you're making every single day. You know, what gets measured gets managed. It's a Tim Ferriss quote, track how much money you make every day. So I did every day for four years, I put down how much revenue and profit I made in an Excel spreadsheet. And after four years, I had this graph of my life as an entrepreneur, my life as a media buyer, my life as an affiliate marketer. So it was, it's this long thing. And one day I found myself just, I was like, I 
because things had been bad for like three months. I was like, I couldn't motivate myself to get out of bed. I couldn't do anything. My laundry was piling up, right? My dishes were dirty. Just the whole thing was off. And I remember uh-huh. looking at my graph and I was looking at this thing and it's just up and down. And I had just been down for a while. And I was like, I saw this, this, this piece where in my graph, it had been flat for like three or four months. And then boom, life just took the off. And then it would be three months win. And it would be flat again for a few months. And then boom, life would take the off again. And there was like three streaks I had gone on in my career where it had been flat and then life exploded, life exploded, life exploded. And then one day I was like, man, I wonder what the fuck I was thinking about just a week before life took the fuck off because it was flat and then it blew up. And then I was wow. like, holy shit, my journals, I've been journaling this whole time. I can literally go back to the week before life exploded and see what was going on. So I go back inside these journals. I find the coolest fucking thing. There was a lot of affirmations, a lot of stuff. If you want everything that I found in there, you can go on peterkell.com. You can, I wrote a story about this called the magic words that bring riches, but there was one common theme they all had in common right before life took off. And that there was this constant feeling like something amazing was about to happen. Something amazing was about to happen. Something amazing is about to happen. It was like, I don't care how bad it's been. The winds of change are here. It's not like how it's been. Something's about to happen. Something's about to come in my life. And it, the whole energy, it was shifted in these, like, in, these, in these stories that I was reading, right? It was right before, a week before everything exploded, everything took off. Like literally the words, something amazing is about to happen was written in one of these journals. And I was like, that, that phrase, there's something into that, right? And it seems to me like the more I focused on the amazing things, the more I felt like something amazing was about to happen, the more amazing things started to happen to me, like kind of like the universe, the law of attraction and stuff like that. So I was like, wow, I really want to take this idea and I really want to roll with it. Right. So I took that phrase, something amazing is about to happen. And I hung it in my shower and I hung it in my living room. So I would see it every day and I put it on my notebook and I put it on a t-shirt and I made it the sub logo of our company name. So every time I walked in the office, I would see something amazing is about to happen. And my whole team would see it. And dude, that was the fucking start. That was the start. So so every single day, something amazing about to happen. I'd see it. I think about what the amazing things that are happening, which means that more amazing things are happening. And I get that feeling. And that feeling is what I feel like is standing in the universe. Dude, that started the biggest run of my life. It was the, it was just everything exploded. 4 million in a month by month three, did 4 million a month every month for eight plus months in a row, almost 10 months, closed off the first 12 months at 40 million bucks, then got bought out, sold my position in the company. And it was like, that was the sickest thing ever. And every day in the shower, I would see this phrase, something amazing is about to happen. And the, it just felt like I was this, this fucking luck magnet where just amazing things would just come to me. Like the universe would just send me amazing stuff. And the last part of this story is I was getting ready to move out of my house. I was moving out of my house and I took down, I went to my shower because I was going to go travel around the world. And I took I look at my shower and I see that phrase, something amazing is about to happen. And I took it down and I just could feel so much love for this phrase. Cause I was like, this is the more I think about the amazing things in my life, the more I attract amazing things. And I was like, I'm going to take this with me. So I went to the tattoo shop and I tattooed something amazing on my arm right there. It stands for something amazing is about to happen. So this message goes with me wherever I go. It is a part of my life to a core, something amazing is about to happen. The more you focus on it, the more it happens. And I got the data to prove it. Here's what I believe. I've seen The Secret, the movie The Secret, a thousand plus times. I completely agree that thoughts become things, but it's the feelings, it's your feelings that are the secret. Good vibes attract good things. Amazing vibes attract amazing things. Bad vibes attract bad things. I think everyone's felt that before. When you feel a bad vibe, you feel like something bad is going to happen, right? The universe sends you what you're feeling. That's how it works. Whatever you feel is what the universe sends you. I'm terrified of complaining because I, if I think about bad things, I get those bad vibes. It's like a boomerang that goes out to the universe and it comes back to me in 72 hours. Of that something that makes me feel that emotion again happens. So if I want to attract amazing things into my life, 
those amazing things are going to make me feel amazing. So if that's the experience I want from the universe, I have to feel amazing first in order for the universe to send me that amazing thing that makes me feel amazing. Again, it's this wheel that kind of turns and your emotions are everything and feelings are the secret. And it all comes back to the, if I could feel amazing now, the universe will send me something amazing in, in tune with what I'm putting out. Man, thank you so much. Um, got to jump off and I know you also got have stuff to do. Thank you so much, my man. Later, Alex. Appreciate being on the yeah, show. Guys, follow Peter, connect with him. This guy is he's amazing. You'll be in Dubai, right? Speaking I'll be in Dubai. Speaking in Dubai next month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, DSL Masterclass. Yeah. I'm also speaking there. So I'll see you there, man. Cool. See you there, Alex. Yeah. See you, my man. Thank you. Everybody.